Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're going to take a look at the DeLonghi Dedica Maestro Plus, also known as the EC950. And we want to look inside because it includes actually some new features, some new surprises, and we're just going to have a look and see what's all in there. And yes, DeLonghi did finally include solenoid valves, but how did they include them? That's what we're going to look at. So let's just have a look at the water path here as well as we can see it from the top. We've got water coming up here from the pump. What's interesting right away is it seems that there is a new overpressure valve here and we'll talk about the pressure in just a little bit. And it exits here into the thermal block. Here is the runoff um, from the overpressure valve. So it enters the thermal block and what's very interesting is that you'll see at the exit of the thermal block, there is this little thermal probe here. So that would suggest that this is running with a PID. Very nice. Where do we go from there? So we exit the thermal block here and we go into the brew group. Finally, from the brew group, it extends away and heads into the first solenoid valve. This blue thing here is a solenoid valve. And this one is set up in just a two way. So you got an input and an output, it basically switches on or off. Now from this solenoid, the water goes from this one to the next solenoid. And then the next solenoid decides, okay, if it is powered off, it's going to exit here out of the top, out of this low pressure hose. And if it's powered on, it's going to exit out here on the side. And this is where the hot steam is going to come and uh, go out here through your steam wand. So essentially, when we are steaming, we got to use these two solenoids. All right, so let's think about the different modes. First, we got espresso mode, and then we have got steaming mode. So when we're in espresso mode, the water is, is going to go here to the brew group, and it will also make it here to the first solenoid, but the solenoid here is closed. So that's the end of the road for the water there. Then pressure will build up and eventually open up the expansion valve, which is essentially a spring here on the bottom of the brew group. At least that's how I understand it. If we, however, want to go into steam mode, then we first of all have to turn this solenoid on so that the water can make it past that solenoid to the next one. And this one is what decides what happens next in that case. So when we're heating up the thermal block to go hotter for steaming, first we want to purge the water out of there the condensation water. So what we're going to do then is let it exit first out of here. So when this relay gets a zero signal, zero volts, it's going to exit here out of the top of this and go down into the drip tray. That's the first mode. Second mode is going to start steaming. So then it's going to switch the solenoid on and the steam is going to leave here out of the side of the solenoid. Then at the end of steaming, what we're going to do is purge again because we need to run some water through the thermal block to cool it down a bit. So in the third mode, we're going to let water run all through the circuit and exit here again out through the top of this solenoid valve. And fourth, when we move this back down to its home position, the fourth thing that's going to happen is we're going to allow again the water to exit through here to purge down through the steam wand, any milk or anything that might have gotten sucked up into the holes. So that's how that works. So as you can see here, DeLonghi has added two solenoid valves, which is in and of itself kind of a cool thing, but unfortunately it's just for the steam. It's not for um, releasing the pressure off of your brew group. And that is something I have not seen in any DeLonghi. They just let the pressure just kind of sit there, which is annoying. Yeah, and the other thing is, okay, this guy does cost like 400 to 450, depending on your market. And I think a big part of it is, is due to these solenoids. Because these, if you're looking online for spare parts, solenoids cost like 25 to 50 euros, depending on the manufacturer. And that's that. But the surprises are interesting, okay? We've got a different overpressure valve. We've got here a, a thermal probe, which would indicate a PID. And then we've got the two solenoid valves here, which is very interesting. And finally, with this Maestro Plus, we've also got a water tank uh, in which is monitored for the water level. So when the water level is too low, it won't pull a shot. That is a very nice feature that I'm really happy to see. Getting value from this video? Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Now, people have been asking me, 
how's the pressure on this? Can it be regulated? How high does it go? How about the temperature? And so far in my initial measurements, the pressure I did measure today does make it up in between 11 and 12 bars and then it cuts off. So it's got a water counter in here like it always has. And once it reaches that high pressure, that's, that's where the maximum is. So unfortunately it's not at eight or nine bars. It is still at 11 to 12. As you would say in America is it is what it is. As far as the temperature goes, I did make some measurements today as well. And the temperature, whether you are in the 92, 94 or 96 setting, it does kind of spikes up in the beginning. It's not a heated brew group by the way. So it, it goes basically from let's say 35 degrees Celsius up to whatever 50 or 60 in the initial spike as the pre-infusion is running and, and then it will hit a peak somewhere around let's say 88 or 92 whatever you got set up and then it will kind of head down towards the middle of the shot go down by a few degrees and then back up so it's certainly not something kind of rock solid that you expect from a PID with that being said the shots I've gotten from this so far, and I've tried three different beans, have been actually very tasty. Yeah, for me anyway, and tastier than I can remember them being on the original Dedica. So, so maybe the temperature stabilization is, is good enough to make a difference there. Whatever the case, I do quite like the shots that I've been getting from this machine. Now, after all that blabbering, I would say let's just turn the machine on because I want to make a cappuccino. I'm going to first steam milk with the machine open. I'm not going to touch anything in there, but I just want you to be able to see what the water looks like when it's running. While that's heating up, and this does take somewhere around 30 seconds, by the way, it's the same as the original Dedica. I got here two porta filters. And the reason that I got these is, uh, first of all, to answer the question, does an IMS basket fit in the original one? Yes, it does. No problem. This is the H26 version and I think it's deep enough that we could fit, let's see, uh, almost 30 millimeters. So we could fit also the H28 in there, no problem too. So that is a good thing. And uh, what I wanted to show you is that when I'm doing the milk here, what's kind of unfortunate is that here's a spot right here. That's where you're supposed to put the milk. And when you do that, you're going to essentially have if you do your espresso shot first, you're going to have your remaining drips come down here into your pitcher and that's kind of crappy. So I'm going to do the milk first and let's just have a look and see what the circuit does. It's pretty loud by the way. Keep that in mind. The auto steaming is loud. When you manually steam, it's not as loud. Oh, something else I forgot to mention. There is a little air pump in there as well. And so the air pump is going to pump not only steam, but in between intermittently some air into the mixture too. I think it's doing it right now. Okay, so it just purged the thermal block. And now when I put this back down, it's going to purge the actual arm. So you're going to see that this solenoid, the second one is going to switch again for the water to come out of here. That made a really, really thick milk, by the way, super duper thick. Um, I'm pretty impressed so far with the consistency that I've been getting with the texture. It's pretty good. And now I think it's about time that I put the top on. So that's better. What I wanted to mention is that I've got this bottomless porta filter here and I made this with my father-in-law. He is uh, a mechanic and he had to cut this off with a grinder. This is stainless steel. It's super duper duper hard. I would not recommend doing that. You can buy these however from Normcore, from Neo Uza. I'll put a couple links in the description. Like, I don't know, 
too bad. Alright, so you're gonna see here that that sucker just keeps dripping, dripping, dripping. That's kind of annoying. I do kind of wish that they had actually put the solenoid valve to release the pressure there, but what are you gonna do? But anyway, as I was saying, the espresso is tasty. Okay, so this milk was sitting for quite a while, as you can see, it didn't get great latte art. I've not gotten excellent latte art from the automatic milk frothing, but the texture has been, whoa, look at that. <laughs> the texture has been at least pretty good to drink, and uh, I'm satisfied with it for that. But steaming manually is certainly better. I can get some pretty nice milk with it. Although I do find that this temperature probe right here does get in the way a little bit of my whirlpool. Well, I got my cappuccino. You guys got a view of the inside of the machine. I hope the video was helpful for you, that you liked it. If so, give it a like. If you thought it sucked, give it a thumbs down. Whatever the case, till next time I say happy coffee drinking and happy cappuccino drinking. Bye now.